a $100,000 gift to help a wounded police officer. But first, more West Nile vi virus cases strike Sutter County. I'm Laura Vandermeer, and here's your ADTV webcast for Wednesday, September 12th, 2012. Three more human cases of West Nile virus have been reported to Sutter County health officials, making a total of five cases in the county so far this year. A woman and two men were recently hospitalized. The health department said in a news release that two of the patients are stable, but that one of the men is, quote, quite ill. A Sutter County woman was reported as the first human case in the area on August 17th, and a man with a virus was reported on August 28th. A Calusa County resident was also recently diagnosed with the virus. Health officials are reminding people to use the four Ds, that is, use mosquito repellent with DEET, wear long sleeves during dawn and dusk, secure doors and windows, and drain standing water around your home. Well, just about an hour ago at the Yuba City Police Station, a $100,000 gift from two local individuals was given to help aid in the recovery of Oak Creek Police Lieutenant Brian Murphy, who was shot August 5th at a Gurdwara in Wisconsin. The officer was struck 15 times by bullets fired by Wade Page, who later fatally shot himself. The Yuba Sutter Seat community held a large vigil five days later after the shooting. And today, two checks for $50,000 apiece were gifted by Dr. Balwinder Malhi and Didar Baines. Baines' son, Carm, appeared today on his father's behalf. As we search for God's strength to help us through these difficult times, we feel it is necessary to pay tribute to a real American hero. My family and I would like to thank Lieutenant Brian Murphy, who acts, whose acts of courage and bravery saved the lives of many. After being shot nine times, a fellow officer came to his aid, which he declined by ordering the officer to attend the other victims that were there. His bravery and professionalism contained a situation that could have been much worse. He sacrificed his own well-being to save others. We as a country and as a community will be forever in his death, signed Didar Singh Baines. Well, a dirt bike rider suffered moderate injuries today after colliding into the side of a Ford Bronco that was making a U-turn. It happened along Riverside Drive just north of Feather River Boulevard. He was taken by ambulance to ride out Regional Medical Center. The driver of the SUV was identified as 44-year-old Kimberly Rukul Kaba. And the Harvest Bowl pits Live Oak against Gridley, and that matchup is our game of the week. Here's AD Varsity Sports Editor Brian DeMaine, who's leading the Live Oak Lions pack, Coach Dan Johnson. All right, we're down here at Live Oak High School with Coach Dan Johnson. Uh, off to another good start. The Lions are 3-0, and and this weekend they got the uh, the Harvest Bowl. Always a fun one, and uh, you guys get to host it this time. You guys have won it three years now. And and uh, talk to me a little bit about this team. You guys are uh, off to a quick start, and and uh, who's leading you, and, and, and who's doing what for you guys? You know, it's a... Uh... It's it's a it's a good team. At first, you know, I, I thought we were going to be kind of uh, young and um, kind of a brand new line, and so that had me a little um, concerned. But they've they've really stepped up. You know, I I could just see in three games how they've kind of grown and and uh, you know doing better each week. You know, we're kind of blessed in the skill position right now. We we have uh, you know we have um, a great quarterback. We've got some great backs and receivers and. And uh, like I said, the line's kind of coming along now too, so it's uh, we're kind of starting to gel and and uh, get things figured out a little bit. Now you guys uh, obviously led by Romario Acosta, he's kind of been uh, one of the the Mid Valley favorites. Uh, talk to me a little bit about his uh, about his injury that he suffered uh, and and if he's completely over that. You know, we uh, he included everybody kind of felt like it might have been his knee, but it it turned out it was just kind of a, a high thigh injury. Um, or excuse me, a high um, calf injury, and uh, you know he, he felt better actually even later that evening, and then the next day he was he was feeling pretty good, and, and obviously um, he felt he felt fine the you know the following week um, well enough to, to play, and so lucky we um, that he didn't get hurt, and uh, you know I'm glad glad to see he's still out here and, and able to run the show out here. Watch ADTV tomorrow as we meet up with the Gridley Bulldogs coach, John Cooprider. In tomorrow's paper, Sutter County supervisors have okayed an agreement to pay 
for the Riego Road interchange with the understanding that a developer that's a partner in the project will be the first to be reimbursed if other developers eventually join the project. According to Sutter County Supervisor Larry Munger, the interchange is still slated to begin construction next year and replace the stoplight there now. Reporter Ben Vandermeer is working on that story now. Get a copy of the newspaper tomorrow to read the full article. That's your ADTV webcast for Wednesday, September 12th, 2012. For updates on these stories and more, go to appealdemocrat.com or pick up a copy of the AD, your Yuba Center newsletter, at your favorite newsstand.